Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, many Memorial Chapel, isn't this kind of nonsensical? The doors are opened up at this time of day when most people should be sleeping in. Bring in all these flowers and, well, you still have that stained glass window with that picture. Rather nonsensical. I, I really don't understand why you can perseverate on this notion. rather nonsensical. I mean, you sing beautiful words, and, and, and there's lovely music adorning our worship, but, but really, what, what are you singing about? I mean, it's, it seems like nonsense to me. Something that cannot be explained with empirical data. What's going on? Congregation. Really? You look at these words from ancient texts, and you have found meaning in it? When I look at these accounts, so to speak, it appears like nonsense to me. <coughs> I have been to many cemeteries in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, and a few in other provinces. I have found in those cemeteries different experiences. There are benches, to be sure, along pathways. There is usually a quiet, a peaceful experience to be had in a cemetery. Often there will be no other human being, perhaps, except for the groundskeeper on a ride-on lawnmower tending to the grass. Sometimes I'm alone. I can see flowers that have been placed by different gravestones to give respect and honor to those who have died. Some, like the one in Fredericton, downtown off of George Street, has several different plaques where you can find the names of loyalists who died long ago. And it becomes a wonderful statement of history. And I can journey from gravestone to gravestone, perhaps even finding a relative. Some, like the one in Upper Granville, are hidden from human eye on the old highway. You have to know where to turn at the correct moment to go in a winding path to find a cemetery nestled away with history. Rolling hills, but indeed it's a place of peace and memory and nothing more. Walking up Gaspro Avenue, there is a walkway that takes you through the cemetery there. And people will often divert their course up that hill so they can walk through and, and perhaps think of loved ones past. But, but really, to think of anything else when you're in the place of the dead, is that not nonsense? The memories are there, and that should be enough. We find ourselves, though, in the face of this apparent nonsense, confronted with something else this day. The women have gone to the tomb, as is appropriate, on the day after the Sabbath, to anoint the body of their loved one. We have Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joanna, who had funded much of the Nazarene's journey and ministry. Check out Luke chapter 8, 13. That's the other place she's mentioned. And some other women, doing what they thought was appropriate doing what made sense. But instead, something else happens. They arrive at this place of the dead, finding no dead body. Instead, confronted with men wearing dazzling clothes, they are told not to look for the living in the place of the dead, but to go elsewhere and to seek it there. They have this news which is perplexing to them. It's not making sense. But still they venture back to speak with the apostles. And oh, their response is one that can be well understood. Nonsense that cannot be. It's not just that they were women conveying the news, but likely yeah, that had something to do with it too, because Peter has to go and check it out for himself. 
We're told in the last verse, but Peter got up and he ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home, amazed at what had happened, but still not with an answer. Still, the sense of it was difficult to achieve. Nonsense? Or something else? Three things which you and I may be invited to consider, as those long ago were as well, on this day where apparent nonsense is transformed into something else. Three things that emerge for us are these. First of all, revelation, something revealed to us, a new truth, might not make sense at first until it's broadened out into a larger perspective. The story you see does not end with verse 12 in chapter 24 of Luke's Gospel. The story unfolds for us in the ongoing saga of the early church. But it doesn't stop there. The way of Christ, the body of Christ, continues through the centuries. We have stories over and over of a growth of compassion and love when we're doing things right that start to make sense of this resurrection, of this apparent life where we expected only death. As a child, I had as one of my possessions a large magnifying glass. Maybe you did too. I used it for many things, but one of the things I used it for was to look at pictures in the newspaper. Did you know that if you use the magnifying glass close up on a newspaper picture, you only see dots? They don't make much sense. Grayish dots and lightish grayish dots, They don't make any sense other than to see these dots until you move back and you see the picture come into a more completed way. This day, when others might tell us it's nonsense for us to be here at this hour of the day, worshiping in the way we worship, recognizing the resurrection, we can broaden out our view, see that from this pixel point, And beyond, we are called upon to be a resurrected people in the face of new life. But there is a second thing of making sense out of the nonsense you and I are invited this day. Revelation of what previously did not make sense to us is also something we are called upon, perhaps compelled to, convey to others. The women, seeing this mystery in the cemetery, did not keep it to themselves. Even though they had not made full sense of it, even though they had not all of the answers of the universe or an understanding fully of the resurrection, they went and told others. They went and conveyed the news. Come, listen to this story. Come, see this empty tomb. Can we make sense of it together, perhaps? It's not always easy. People will reject us. There will be disbelief. But the ongoing challenge of the Christian is to live daily in a resurrected sense so that others might see a love that transcends all of our apparent empirical data logic. The first time I remember, as a kid, being confronted with death was sitting in the home of my mother's friend, Mary. Now, she had just lost her mother. I was seven, and Mary is a Roman Catholic, and so they were having a wake in that house. And I was sitting playing with some toy car or another in one corner while the adults did what the adults do at that time. And I looked over and I saw the casket, and I saw the body in the casket, and I came to a realization at an early age that All of us are on a kind of spiral in life, and we are one dot on that spiral, and we will be confronted with this ending of life at some point, experiencing it when loved ones die, and then when our number comes up to, that also will happen. 
And I thought to myself at that early age, not much of a grasp on abstract thought, is that all that there is to it? And then I saw the adults speaking not in terms of death and sadness only, but of life, of memory, of aspirations beyond, and indeed of faith communicated, prayers being said, comfort being offered, life in the midst of apparent death. It didn't give me all of the answers, but sense started to form in the midst of what otherwise would be seen as nonsense. In our faith, we believe that God has entered the human condition and experience, you see. Sometimes it will be with the inexplicable, the things that don't make any sense to us yet. Rarely can it be defined or neatly boxed up in human definitions. I cannot tell you exactly how that will manifest for you personally, but as a collective, as the members of the body of Christ, we journey to the place of death, finding the tomb empty, finding that the, st the stone has been rolled away, and that there is a realization that something more than what we can make sense of has transpired. And so thirdly, this day, before we approach the table of memory, but the table of faith, where we share in the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, the one who now lives, our revelation is this. Revelation is present more in our questions, our challenging, our amazement, our perplexing times, the times in which we are amazed rather than just given pat two-dimensional answers. You and I indeed are called upon to have a link of faith as we approach this resurrection day, as we celebrate the raised Christ. And in this questioning time, it is much more important for us because we then develop a vocabulary in life. How do we deal with the times that we don't have the exact answers? Turn to the Christ who is raised, the one who brings life to us. How do we approach the times when our own spirits are crushed? We are invited to depend upon one who has left the place of the dead and invites us back into the place of the living. We look to the world with all of its severe challenges at this time, places that really don't make any sense, and you and I are invited to bring into it the sense of love that goes beyond human understanding, that enters into the cemetery, and draws out life, draws out new life for you and for me.